Thank you so much for having me. I'm from Silicon Valley in San Francisco, where you might have seen a lot of these startups. I'm here to talk about three things. One, I want to define the collaborative economy, but I want your feedback. Two, I'm going to take you a quick tour on the honeycomb. And three, I want to talk to you about how large inks, big corporations, as Robin talked about, what they're doing to participate in our collaborative economy. So first, a definition. The collaborative economy is an economic model where common technologies enable people to get what they need from each other. And this is what we call the collaborative economy. And to best illustrate that, the honeycomb is a graphic that I produced and launched at last May's WeShare. And it's a great example of what's happening in this space. Now, in the center of this honeycomb is a new class of people. And whatever you do, don't call them consumers. They're hosts, they're drivers, they're crowd funders, they're makers. They're turning their own, their own lives into companies. It's a different class of people. And then we see many different industries are being impacted by this space. The first one is in the goods space. So you might have heard of Play, where I used, we rented Legos for $25 a month for my young daughter rather than buy them. There's no reason to own Duplos. She's going to outgrow them. And then even in the, in the food space, we see new forms of people sharing food, like San Francisco-based Feastly, which enables neighbors to go to other people's homes for authentic meals, the food space. And then even services are being impacted. People are sharing their time. One that's well known in the United States, and I have global examples today, is Instacart, where people have extra time, and they spend that time to go shopping for you. We just had food delivered to our home while we were getting back from a trip. And then, oh, sorry, this is clicking so fast. Uh, and then, so the next one is on the transportation space. And Blah Blah Car is one of the, uh, the what I learned is the largest ride-sharing company in uh, the world now, has over double the riders of Eurostar. Well, we'll hear from Frederick a little bit later. And then physical space as well is also being impacted. I'm struggling with the, uh, the clicker, uh, by the way. Physical space is being impacted. Ah, yes, and here's a picture here. Just in our own town here in Airbnb in Paris, people are sharing their homes, and this is where we're staying as well. Maybe I can stand over here. All right, and then even money is being impacted. So people are sharing their money, crowdfunding. People are funding the digital watch, which published before even the Apple Watch did. So this is an example of the crowd beating Apple to market with the Pebble Watch by an entire year. And then even peer-to-peer -peer lending. People are sharing their own physical uh, money with each other. This company, backed by Google, has 110 million funded into them, um, is now doing 7 billion of loans peer-to-peer -peer, instead of going through a traditional bank. So that's the collaborative economy that we published last May. And then in December, here in Paris at Le Web, we saw that it was growing, and I published a larger version that represents our economy collaborativo. So let's take a look how it's grown. It's doubled. There's now 12 hexes. We don't have time to go through them all today, but just a very quick tour. We're seeing peer-to-peer -peer starting to happen in health and wellness. The Airbnb for hotel, uh, hospitals is Cohilo, and it, help around is peer-to-peer -peer for diabetic patients. And even in logistics, we pulled this out as its own play we see that people are doing short distance shipping instead of UPS and even long distance shipping and people are sharing their physical space like Roost instead of using a storage facility. And even inside of big companies or organizations, you can use these for your own companies. SAP, a company I work with, created To Go, a ride sharing app for employees, for their own uh, employees to ride share to work. So BASF uses this in Germany. And then also, even in the utility space, we see peer-to-peer -peer energy sharing, like Van der Braun in the Netherlands, or even Solar Mosaic of crowdfunding. We're seeing forms of peer-to-peer -peer elements in crowdfunding in utilities, and certainly even in telecommunications. 
And then even in cities, we're seeing people share, their own cities are sharing tractors and street uh, sweeping equipment using tools like Muni Rent instead of buying them from Caterpillar and John Deere. And they're renting this equipment out with cleaning workers and making money. One city is renting it to another city. Have you ever heard of a, of a place where a city is generating revenue not from taxes? That's a change. And then lastly, even in the learning space, people are learning from each other in peer-to-peer -peer learning, such as uh, Khan Academy, Instructables, and Skillshare. So to summarize, let's bring the whole economy up to one little graphic, and this represents what we're starting to see. And by the way, there's a template that you can actually take this and put whatever logos you want. I was in the Middle East, and they have their own versions of all of these startups. You can create one just for Paris. So the template is on the website that you can use. So what is the finding? It means that the collaborative economy is impacting all areas of society. Now, there is a downside to this. I want to warn you that if you believe that this is a utopian for people, I want to tell you something quite shocking. The VC funding, and let's remind us what VC stands for, venture capitalism. That's what it stands for, venture capitalism. They own most of these startups. There's been 11 billion, almost 12 billion funded into this space. Now, social networks like Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram have been funded around 6 billion. So this market's been funded over double in a shorter period of time. So I'm here to tell you some news, and it's a fact, but the sharing economy is mainly owned by the 1%. Now, let's talk about what big companies are doing to change their business models and participate and be resilient in our new economy. And I'm very excited to tell you that they're increasing their adoption in this space. And this is where I focus my time. This is a frequency chart of how big corporations are participating in this space. And there's a very interesting, useful graphic that will help you to understand the three plays that big companies are doing in this space. And this is called the collaborative economy value chain. Companies only make goods or offer services or have a marketplace of buyers and sellers. And what they're doing in this market is business model transformation. They're turning their products into services because people don't want to own goods anymore. People are also, companies are also, instead of offering services, they're launching their own marketplaces, just like Blah Blah Car and Airbnb have. And then three, we see that, that big companies are tapping into the maker movement and crowdfunding and getting their own customers to build their products. I'll walk you through each of these, show you some real world examples and define what it is. So the first one, people don't need to own things, they have access over ownership. So we see companies changing their business models and we can call this brand as a service. Brand as a service. And what an example of this, I'll show you two examples, is BMW, a company I work with, uh, launched Drive Now, where you can rent a one series electric car instead of having to own it. So they took cues from Robin Chase's Zip Car, and now a car manufacturing company is now offering BMWs as a service. Oop, let's back up. We're also seeing that many companies are partnering with Uber for on-demand services. And, and this element of it is peer-to-peer -peer ride driving as a service. So they're, for example, Hyatt and Starbucks are now integrating the Uber technology into their own apps so you can have a peer drive you to one of their stores or hotels. So it's starting to integrate. So that's the first one called brand as a service. Let's take a look at the next one. Big companies see the honeycomb out there. There's marketplaces in all areas of society. So they're changing their business models and launching their own marketplaces. Here's two examples. The largest retailer in the world, Walmart, launched a game exchange at their own stores where you can sell back your used games and buy used games, and that brings more foot traffic into the store. They saw this trend happening anyway, so they decided to bring it into their own house. So when the largest retail in the world starts to move into the space, it means it's a reality for others. And even IKEA had a used goods marketplace 
in Norway of their own products where people can actually buy and sell their own stuff. Now, why would they do this? I think there's a number of reasons. One, it's a commitment to sustainability. Number two, it shows their products are actually durable. And three, it gets people to buy more product. You have an upsell opportunity. They're coming back into your store. So that's an example of two major retailers that are doing the marketplace model. Let's do the last one. And again, we see that there's the maker movement out there and crowdfunding. People are creating their own products. So we're seeing companies rely on the crowd to actually help produce their own products. And we should call this enable a platform. Let's take a look. Hasbro noticed that there were 3D printers. Uh, the makers were actually 3D printing out transformers and My Little Ponies without their permission. And they had one of two choices, to fight it and shut it down or two to partner with them. And what they did is they partnered with Shapeways, which is a Dutch company, and they said, have the official 3D printing files, but every time you print out one of those toys, we want a revenue cut. So the crowd is now producing products and improving products for Hasbro, and Hasbro is taking a revenue cut. See, it's a crowd and a company working together. Swisscom. They partnered with Mila, where local neighborhood IT experts could come to a stranger's home and help them set up their TV and their wireless and all their tablets. So, it, and it's called Swisscom Friends. I work with Swisscom. And this is a wonderful example of crowds and companies working together to provide new value and friendly neighborhood resiliency for anybody that needs help with complex technology issues. And the last example is UK's Barclays card where they were trying to reach millennials, and so they opened up a platform called The Ring and encouraged the, the millennials to design the way that The Ring product, the credit card, works. Uh, not just the design of it, but the, the points and the fees. And they were issued that card, and then the millennials got to choose which one of their nonprofits got the excess profits. So that means that the crowd is designing, building, and the big company is sharing the rewards with the crowd, and that's a big change for corporations. So that's Enable a Platform. And to bring all of these together, I will having, I'm ho hosting an event for large corporations in Bern on the 3rd of June. Please contact me if you know a big company. So to summarize everything that we went through today, common digital technologies are empowering people to get what they need from each other. It means the crowd is becoming like a company, and they are bypassing inefficient corporations. Like digital, big companies are going to adopt these same things that all of us already are doing. They adopted internet and social media, and now they will adopt the collaborative economy. But it requires them to do business model change. Products become services, services become marketplaces, and then they build your products on top of that marketplace. And if a big company does this, this improves our economy because they're part connected to us, empowering us, the crowd, and we're built to last, and we're reducing our waste. Welcome to the collaborative economy. Thank you.